Hi guys and welcome back. We told you yesterday and today before Bitcoin is going to move here to the upside because we identified correctly where the liquidity is and where the potential move is based on that going to be. Now that we are already in these levels that we were speaking about, you are wondering yourself, okay, what is coming next here? What should I do with my position? And is this the break that we were waiting for to get into a new all-time high? That is something that we want to talk about here today and if there is a potential trap somewhere. If you think this is interesting, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, like this video and also activate the bell so that you will never miss out on these really important updates. And now let me show you what I believe is going to happen here next. I want to show you quick the CME chart because exactly as I predicted it, uh, we saw CME opening and the price starting to move away from the CME gap. So which adds more uh, credence to the fact that I believe that we are first going here to around $83,000, do something like this here, into the halving, and then potentially after the halving, see this here happening. And this will mark the bottom after the halving. And from there, we are start doing something like this. So that is uh, more or less the macro outlook uh, what I'm looking at right now. But again, remember, um, I take the scenario of a drop after the halving with a grain of salt right now because the ETFs basically throw everything upside down um, compared to prior halvings to a certain extent. And this kind of buying pressure could change basically the historical pattern that we see um, occurring around the halving and just after the halving in terms of a drop to the downside. So I'm a little bit careful uh, with that right now. So I, I want to see what's going to happen here uh, when we get the halving, if we get a small move to the downside, you know, if we get an imminent dump or something like that. So, but around the halving, we should be uh, definitely um, on alert when it comes to Bitcoin and um, our other positions. On the 30 minutes chart, we basically saw exactly uh, the move playing out that I was predicting. The only difference was that when we got here to $70,400, we got rejected from there, came all the way back down, started to go sideways, and then started pumping to the upside. But overall, the target that I gave you was correct. If you would have held your position um, after that break it to the upside, uh, you would have definitely hit all the take profit points that I had given, even the bullish one. You know, remember the bullish one here. Uh, that was at 71,580-ish, something like that, 590. So, and also the conservative one, I think after the initial breakout, you we would have hit that already or close to it. Yeah, so that was $70,800, so we got close to it. So, it doesn't matter which one you took here. In both cases, uh, you would have been uh, successful by just holding on. To that position and that was basically what I also did uh, for myself you know so I was holding through this whole move here until $72,000 there I got stopped out after I raised my stop loss uh, I could have gotten really close to my initial take profit point of 73,000 but I'm, I'm fine you know so I made some good money on this move and now we are seeing here on the 30 minutes chart a potential rising wedge if you take out all the wicks to the upside. And here's now another thing. Everybody believes if we push a little bit higher and get into $73,000, that this is potentially a bull trap. And we're going to see something like this back down. I don't believe that this is going to happen. I have to uh, disappoint all the bears out there. You, you can try to short, you know, be my guest, short, from the uh, all-time high at $73,000, $74,000, and try to short it to the downside, um, you will get wrecked. And I'm gonna show you in a moment why I believe that this is um, a massive, massive uh, bear trap. Here you see on the four hourly chart, something also that I, that I wanted to point out quick here. Uh, I saw some comments under my video yesterday where people said, oh, you said it, it's breaking out, but now it's back down. You did not listen. You did not listen. To the people that commented uh, that it should have broken out immediately, you did not listen. I said yesterday, go back and watch it. I said 
the overall direction is here to the upside, to this resistance area that we now went to. But I said on the short term, because I did not trust the overbought stochastic RSI, we could see a scenario like here with this arrow that I pointed out, something like this before we go up. So and more or less, this is exactly what we got here. So if I move this here a little bit more like this, and then here like this, so this is what we got. So I was correct uh, with the assumption here um, on a shorter time frame that we will get here this small sideways move before we get the pop to the upside. And now we are trying to break above $72,880 because that is also a resistance area. If I go here a little bit further back, uh, let me actually go to for all the time frame for this. So you see, if I mark out this area, if we are carving this out, then you see here, that is the resistance that we are fighting right now with. And once this is broken, I can imagine that we go really quick into no all-time high here. And again, the only level that I'm concerned about here to the upside, where we might face uh, some strong resistance, is around the $75,000 level, because it is a psychological number. And you can go back in Bitcoin's history and look what happens at around psychological number 2,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. Bitcoin gets up there and gets immediately a rejection. So, and 75K will most likely will not be any, any different. And so that's, that's why um, we need to be here a little bit careful when we are getting um, above the all-time high at almost $74,000 and getting to 75 because from there I expect a rejection, um, reaction, sorry, a reaction back to the downside, most likely back to like 73, something like this. Then we come back up and break it properly and continue higher. Here on the on this four hourly chart, I wanted to show you something that a lot of people are looking at right now. Actually, I should have it here already. This big pennant that has now broken to the upside. Something else that I, that I want to uh, show you guys here. So here you see happening what I was pointing out yesterday and most likely we are getting here the moving averages um, intertwining and then um, if Bitcoin moves to the upside from yesterday's view we're gonna see then later that golden cross coming up here because technically we got a death cross but when you look at the price action it's clear that this is a fake out. You know, so unless Bitcoin turns immediately around, makes a Burj Khalifa pattern and comes back down. I'm, I don't believe that this is going to happen because in terms of the breakout, we got it at the sweet spot where we should get the breakout within the, uh, the pennant or the triangle. And now the target for this is also something that I want to show you guys. Take the bull case for this. This is an insane target, like super bullish. So this is 110 $101,449, that would be the bull case. So, but again, um, in the long run, definitely it's going to happen, but I don't think in the short term. So if you just take it as a symmetrical triangle, the target is at $83,949, and that makes a lot of more sense to me right now because it's kind of in alignment with the number that I had anyway in my mind, uh, as the all-time high that we are getting now into the halving. And it's, it's just $900 off of what, what I was thinking where we are going. You know, So there is, again, some confluence um, around this number. So I, I give this here a uh, higher likelihood to be hit uh, before the halving than uh, $101,000. And $101,000 will be most likely happening end of summer, in my opinion. End of summer early Q4, something like that, before we see something like this. So, But if you want to swing trade Bitcoin, uh, it would be not a bad idea, you know, to um, if you did not build already a low leverage position, to start building it now, you know. So, or you wait until after the halving, hoping for the drop, you know, that brings you back to like the 60s, um, the mid 60s, and go all in there, you know, and then trade it to the upside, something like that. When we're looking at the liquidation levels, I can only repeat myself, we were super, super right here uh, when I said uh, we are taking out the over leveraged positions that were here and going then to the upside to clean everything that's remaining here. And that would mean a move to around $78,000 uh, in the uh, imminent short term, which would be a new all-time high and 
again, I believe we're not going to stop there. We are going then here even higher, you know, and clean everything. So here now, debt level $84,100 would again coincide with the target of the pennant that I just have shown. Uh, so again, something else is adding confluence to, to that level here uh, to have uh, liquidation levels sitting at these prices. But in the imminent short term, the level that will be taken out is here around the $75,000 area. So because here is quite a concentration of short liquidations. And then at some point, like I said, we are coming back down to take out all these over leveraged longs here, but not now. Not now. The direction is to the upside. Again, the liquidity is way closer to the price action um, in terms of short liquidations than uh, taking out uh, long positions here, which is way harder uh, to take out from where we are at right now than um, taking all the short liquidity above us. Now, when we're going to the the liquidation heat map, you're kind of going to see the same thing. See here around $74,000 and $73,000 is a high concentration of um, short liquidations. And once we are tapping into this, you know, so you're going to see another quick move here to like $75,000. Yesterday, also people were complaining, oh, you said we get a short squeeze, you know, when we tap here into uh, $70,000. Uh, yes, we got a small short squeeze, but we got immediately hammered down again, went a little bit sideways to gain momentum and then got a proper short squeeze, you know, so sometimes we need more than one attempt, you know, so uh, just uh, you yeah, have to keep this in mind. But if you are sure about the direction, you know, you hold to your position the same what I did, you know, so and then you uh, reap the rewards um, afterwards. Also here, the direction is in direct uh, is to go here to $75,000, potentially $77,000 in the short term over the next couple of days. Uh, because the closer we get to the halving, um, the higher the price should normally get pushed. And then again, this would be around next week, Tuesday. I would expect things to slow down um, because everybody is then already waiting what's going to happen, you know, when, when the halving occurs and stuff like that. When we're looking at Velo data to see how the spot bits are doing, then we can also see here um, over the last couple of days, they have picked up again. Um, also today, here OKX Bybit have picked up. Also Binance is picking up here again some steam. Let's actually also look here on the daily. So on the daily, we see here massive spot bits right now. So, and that is something that we want to see in a rally like this, you know, so, um, and we don't want to see here a lot of selling pressure coming in. So on Binance, we see here a small move here to the downside right now um, over the last 20 minutes. Uh, so small correction, people are starting to sell, but I still believe that this is going to turn around here for the rest of the day at some point, you know, so it's just a small correction um, after almost $3,000 move, you know, so almost a 5% 5, uh, 5 move on Bitcoin. Um, in the last seven, eight hours. So it, it is normal, you know, so that, it, uh, that the price needs to settle a little bit before we continue higher. When it comes to funding rates, let's have a look also there. Um, still okay, you know, so on the daily, uh, when we look here on, on the weekly, okay, we are also seeing here now an increase again, but it, it's nothing compared when I go here to the monthly to this year uh, at, uh, at the beginning. Uh, so basically a month ago, you know, so we're, we're not even close to where we were a month ago. And also here, this high spike at the 1st of April, you know, we are not even halfway there yet. So we, we can still have a lot more leverage in the market before everything gets frothy again. Uh, and we should get uh, cautious with, with our positions, you know, so we are definitely not not there yet at all. And guys, don't forget, if you want to trade anywhere, uh, do it on Bybit, you still get 30K if you sign up with my specific link down below here. And if you want to trade altcoins, then just uh, provide um, some money to the strategy on Margex. It's called AM Crypto Altcoins. And if you cannot use Bybit, use BitGet or Femex. They are still uh, one of the um, two best exchanges out there uh, if you cannot use Bybit, especially if you are in the UK or in the US. And on Femex, you still get, um, I think, a total of $17,000 uh, potentially in bonuses that you can win. And otherwise, just go to Fairdesk if you want to copy trade me. $120,000 is still the highest bonus in the industry. All these links are in the pinned comment below and in the description of my video. And again, you're supporting the channel uh, if you use any of these links, which I highly appreciate, especially now 
where I'm looking at to, um, to yeah, basically grow my team a little bit uh, to bring even more value. So here on the dominance, um, yeah, nothing surprisingly. I, I will not waste a lot of time here on the dominance. So we are bouncing off of the 54.3% level. Uh, I, I said this, you know, that I believe dominance will go up again. Um, when we see Bitcoin going up, which makes sense. Now what we want is that Bitcoin basically goes to the new all-time high, best case scenario, new all-time high. We are not crashing after the halving. Bitcoin only comes down a little bit, stays mid 70s, high 70s, something like this, starts going sideways for a couple of weeks. And what's happening then to the dominance is this here. And this is what we, what we want next for the dominance. We need to be just a week, you know, a week. 10 days, what doesn't matter, you know, it's a really short time frame. Uh, then we should finally see here some action, uh, massive action in, in altcoins. The total market cap did exactly what I wanted to see here. And that is that we closed yesterday's weekly candle at the top of that resistance area here. And exactly again, as I predicted, uh, is that this week's candle is already pushing here to the upside, uh, testing resistance here from the prior weeks. Once we are clearing this, uh, we will go to $3 trillion in the next, uh, yeah, potentially even this week, you know, so it can happen this week. Otherwise I would say within the next uh, 20 days, we are going to see that because it's, for the total market cap, it's not that crazy to add another $400 billion uh, to, to the market cap to get there. Um, yeah, just, just give it, I think maybe around the halving, just after the halving, something like this uh, is, is, is uh, it's what I believe where we're going to hit $3 trillion. Unless there's now a massive inflow um, from the ETFs, you know, because they want to scoop up as much as they can before the, the Bitcoin halving is actually curing, you know, and double uh, their, um, their intake in Bitcoin, you know. So then, of course, you know, then we can hit it um, in the next two, three days, you know, so if, if they go absolutely bananas. Then Ethereum, oh, Ethereum just hit our take profit here from the trade that I had given yesterday. Again, guys, uh, use the links down down below, you know, so you get all these trades here for free. If you want more trades, go to the Discord, but the Discord can right now only be joined with Bybit. But I, I gonna have a chat with the developer again that wanted uh, to uh, get all the other exchanges um, on the Discord so that uh, you basically can use any exchange that I'm affiliated with uh, to join the Discord. So here we got rejected right now because we tried to leave here the biggest volume traded area. And we were here at the last bit, you know, at $3,628. And we're about to break here higher. So if I change this a little bit, so here you see, uh, that was basically the Monday high, $3,673. And we are trying to move higher here right now. Give Ethereum a little bit of time, you know, so that is also a crucial resistance area that it ran into here. You know, look here, resistance, resistance, resistance. So I'm not surprised that we need here a little bit uh, momentum to break through that. And remember, that was also the reason why I told you that we take profit here, you know, because we want to see how Ethereum um, is going to react to that level and take profit here and then decide if we keep the position or tra uh, and trade it higher or close it, you know. So here in that scenario, if you're in that position, raise your stop loss at least to $3,600. You know, so if you did not take profit yet already on that position. So, and just to give you some perspective, so that was, I think, 6% move. Yeah, 6.15% move here in a day. You know, so if you used 20x leverage, that was 123% uh, that, that we made here on that channel. Next for Ethereum, I need to go to a shorter time frame. I think we're going uh, to correct here and come back to $3,580 approximately in the short term. If for some weird reason, Ethereum starts not going sideways here, you know, and we only go to 3,610, something like this, and get squeezed between the Monday high and that level until we, uh, the indicators reset, and then we get another pop to $3,900. And that is the next stop for Ethereum, if we can break above $3,650. That's where I, where I have my, my eyes on. Because on the higher time frames, here's still a lot of room to go to the upside, you know? So just the shorter time frames need to settle a little bit. And then, then we continue to go higher, you know? Because here, again, at $3,650, there is the neckline of that W pattern here. 
So and the target of the W pattern is over $4,000. One, uh, if I measure that, if I just take the candle to be conservative, see $4,134-ish, you know, to the upside. Uh, let's have a look quick on the other positions that I've g given you. So FDM, really nice uh, break from this downward sloping trend line. The target remains uh, $1 and then here the top $1.17. For that trade, so you should be definitely in that already. If you are looking for another entry, wait for a break of uh, 93.5 cents on a, uh, with a one hourly candle close above that level. Uh, there you can enter this. And if we get a deeper pullback to under 90 cents, then under 90 cents becomes your entry. Then Solana, Solana, if you're in it, keep it. If you're not in it and you want in, then around $180 is your entry. And again, target remains here around $200, $210. So I just go quickly through that, you know, so I just want to show you this, that we're basically up on every call that I've given you three, four days ago. So here also on Matic, we are up, I don't know how much, 5% uh, already on that, you know, so here, if you also here miss the move, uh, 95 cents, uh, if we close a one hourly candle above that is the next entry. Otherwise, if you come back to 90 cents, that is your entry. Arbitrum. If we would come back to let's say $1.50, then this is your entry. Otherwise, if we break higher, then at $1.58, that becomes your entry. The target for me is here $1.90 and potentially this downwards coming resistance line here at $2.20 approximately. That's where I'm going to take profit for myself. Uh, Pendle, uh, Pendle has all, almost bottomed out here. So if you're looking for an entry, $6.30 would be good. And if we start breaking up here to the upside, $6.60 is the other level that I would be looking at, potentially $6.75. And then the target is um, $9 approximately. Here on near, um, we got the nice break to the upside after the retest. Remember I told you, here, the second retest is your chance to get in. You had so much time to get into this, you know, so, and then we broke in out to the upside into that resistance area that I was also talking about. Here, uh, I believe that we're going to see some sort of flag, you know, so before we get the other move to the upside, also here target between $8.40 to $9. Um, here, if you missed this trade so far, $7.20 would be a good entry between $7.20 and $25. And if we break higher, your next level of entry um, would be here at $7.54 to the upside to catch the trade. And that's it already for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to smash up the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And I'll see you then again with a lot of more profits tomorrow.